seven days a week. You can watch APA International live on your TV, computer, iPad, tablet and phone. Log on visiontv.co.uk and click on entertainment. Then ATAI, you can stop. This road rise up, mobilize the polity, and get members of our party committing to a successful election by 2023. Progressives gathers on a thank you visit to President Buhari, winning the forthcoming Ekiti and Oshun State's governorship election top agenda. National Assembly resumes plenary. Senate to review new electoral act 2022. Some refinements from time to time to improve our electoral process. Plus, civil service week celebration kicks off. Physically challenged protest discrimination over employment. Most of our members were graduates, master's holders, PhD holders. Hello and welcome to NTA Network News. I am Ian Ray John. Adela Komi Akere joins me from Lagos. Many thanks for joining us. And just to let you know that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen for updates. President Mohamed Buhari has granted audience to the Progressives Governors Forum in furtherance of strategic engagement with critical stakeholders towards ensuring that the governing party retains power for sustainable future of the country. State House correspondent Adam Usambo reports. The governors are meeting President Mohamed Buhari for the first time since the successful conduct of the special convention and presidential primary election of the governing APC. They are here to express formal appreciation to the president for the leadership he provided that led to the widely acclaimed free, fair and transparent exercise that produced Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu as presidential candidate. Discussions centered on the best way forward towards achieving a successful outcome in the forthcoming equity and Oshun governorship elections as well as the 2023 general elections peacefully and transparently. Governor Hope Ozodima of Imo State, who attended the meeting, was later granted audience by the president, where issues of governance dominated discussions. It is, as you were aware, last time I came here with a letter of invite to Mr. President to invite him to come to Imo State on a walking tour. And during that uh, visit, he will be commissioning a worry to Olo a newly dualized highway and the Oweri to Okigwe. And by the grace of God, I reconstructed the State House of Assembly, fully equipped and furnished. And uh, I'm here to dot the I's and cross the T's as to when exactly uh, he will be coming. The governor, who also appreciated the role played by the Nigerian leader at the just concluded presidential primary election of the party, expressed the conviction that with the giant strides achieved by the Buhari presidency in critical economic sectors, the chances of the governing APC to retain power are very bright. The next thing as party leader now and the opinion leaders is for us to rise up, mobilize the polity and get members of our party committing to a successful election by 2023 so that um, our president that is living will also be handing over to our own president of APC. That is our preoccupation now, how to win the elections. We are ready to go and work for our candidate and produce the next president to deliver democratic dividends, develop Nigeria to look like other parts of the Western world where democracy is working. On the issue of running mate for the presidential candidate of the party, the Imo State Governor said that is the prerogative of Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, whom he believes will do the right thing in the best interest of the governing APC. From the State House, Adamusambu, NTA News. 
Meanwhile, the Independent National Electoral Commission has given all eligible voters in Ikita State a firm assurance that only their votes would determine the outcome of the governorship election scheduled for Saturday, June 18, 2022. The chairman of the commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, gave the assurance at a meeting with stakeholders held in Adoikiti, the Ikiti State Capital. Olukemi Sani has details. The Independent National Electoral Commission chairman said the commission would not take any action to the advantage or disadvantage of any political party or candidate during the election. The commission, he said, had carried out series of activities in readiness for the election, which included holding several meetings with political parties and their candidates, interacting with security agencies at national and state levels, as well as consulting with traditional and religious leaders, civil society organizations and the media. The chairman explained that all categories of ad hoc staff for the election have been recruited, trained and screened, while non-sensitive materials have been delivered to the 16 local government areas of the state. Operations for free and fair, credible and transparent and also using election. Inspector General of Police, Usman Alkali Baba, who gave an assurance that adequate security had been provided, advised residents of AKT State to follow laid down electoral guidelines for a peaceful election. As never in a real public program, indeed, all other security agencies, including the military, that have been organized to complement the police, shall remain impartial, far, and for president in the exercise of statutory duties and provided work. And still on the forthcoming governorship election, the people of Ikita State have been urged to vote all Progressives Congress, APC, in the forthcoming governorship election in Ikita State for the continuity of the good work of the present administration of Governor Coyote Fayemi. This was the message of the party's national leadership at the mega rally held in Adoikiti ahead of Saturday's governorship election in the state. Ayo Deji, Okunshaking, reports. Arrival of the APC governorship candidate, Biodun Abayo Miyui Banji, accompanied by the national leadership of the party, APC governors, including the party's presidential candidate and national leader, Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu, set the tune of the mega rally. Vanina chairman of the party, Senator Abdullah Adamu, chairman, governorship campaign council, Governor Atiku Bagudu of Kebi State, and other speakers called on the people of Ekiti State to allow APC to continue the transformation of the state by casting their ballot for the party's candidate on Saturday. They said the various programs of the APC-led government, which they are visible, should be considered by every voter on the election day. <laughs> On his part, for a candidate, Biodun Abayomi Oyibanji wants Ikiti people to thumbprint APC on the ballot come Saturday. For a national leader of the party and the presidential candidate, Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu, wants people of Ikiti states to use their voters' cards wisely and vote for Abayomi Oyibanji of the APC at the June 18 governorship election in Adoikiti, Ayodi Jogunshaki, NT News. And still talking politics, the national uh, chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Senator Iyo Chiaoyu, expressed confidence that the party and its presidential candidate, Atiku Wapubakar, will soon present a running mate that will be generally acceptable to Nigerians if voted into office. Timothy Yusuf reports that he gave the assurance at a meeting with members of the consultative committee set up to assist Atiku choose a running mate. Are you explained that the meeting was in furtherance of consultations in that arriving at a choice which Nigerians would be glad to elect into office. The meeting held behind closed door and under the chairmanship of Deputy National Chairman North Ambassador Umar Damagun. Now heading to the National Assembly. The Senate is to review the amended Electoral Act 2022 and carry out amendment when necessary. President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, said this when he welcomed his colleagues from recess. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sunkwo 
reports. As early as 8 o'clock Tuesday morning, demonstrating members of the National Assembly workers blocked the National Assembly gate in protest of their financial entitlements. One hour later, the union rolled out the roadblock and suspended the protest to end of this month. That gave way for entrance into the National Assembly. Senate thereafter reconvened for plenary after five weeks of recess. Party primaries having been done and dusted, senators are now back for legislative business. President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, welcomed his colleagues to the last year of the Ninth Senate. As a parliament, we still have issues that require our legislative intervention. The security of our country still needs our attention. Because the Electoral Act itself, even though a good document, it's not a perfect document. So it needs some refinement from time to time to improve our electoral process. Deputy President of the Senate, Obie Omar Gege, drew the attention of the Senate to what he described as a heroic effort of one Ejiro Otahiru, a tanker driver who risked his life to save the lives of many persons at Abaho, Delta State, on Friday the 10th of June 2022 by driving a burning tanker to a safer area. I urge that you recommend Mr. Ejiro Otarigo to His Excellency the President, President Muhammad Buhari GCFRO, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria, for a befitting national honor. President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, announced the defection of two senators from KB State. State leader Abdullahi Yahaya and Adamu Alero from the All Progressives Congress to the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Senator Abdullahi Yahaya also resigned as majority leader of the Senate. On behalf of all of us, thank the Senate leader for his uh, devotion uh, to duty to this chamber. Senator Lawan, who had earlier announced the defection and resignation of the minority leader, Ayin Naya Abaribe, suspended it till the next legislative day. Following reactions from members of the PDP who insisted that the letter of notification be read on the floor. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Unko, NTN News. Meanwhile, the outcome of the just-concluded party primaries and fostering robust women inclusiveness in politics were points of emphasis by the Speaker, House of Representatives, Femi Kwetagbiamila, as he addressed plenary. It was the first sitting after the party primaries for the 2023 general elections. National Assembly correspondent Lamiali brings us details. The House members are meeting for the first time in chamber after a political parties' primaries, an exercise that proved a litmus test for the amended Electoral Act 2022. The Speaker, in his welcome address, touched on the heart of the matter. Many fell on the wayside as they failed in their bid for re election in the run up to the 2023 general elections. When we fought for direct primaries in this House, we knew exactly what we were saying. It is rather unfortunate that the process went the way it went. The loss really is not for members who lost. It's a loss to democracy, to the institution, and to the country. The address was reassuring for women who are waiting in anticipation as the House prepares again to vote on the gender-related bills as the lawmakers consider the next batch of the Constitution Amendment bills. Speaker uh, has... Uh, alluded to the fact that we are going to revisit those uh, issues related to gender that were not passed uh, with a view to uh, getting them passed because uh, some members did not get adequate information uh, on, 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 on those issues. Meanwhile, consideration of items slated on the order paper was suspended as the House adjourns plenary to Wednesday, 15th June, in honor of the late House member, Basie Peñon, who died on the 23rd of April, 2022, from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NTA News.
And away from the Green Chamber now, the presidency has reacted to opinions in some quarters describing President Buhari's rule and the APC presidential primary as passive. A statement by Garba Shehu, media aide to the president, says President Buhari is not an elected autocrat, but a refined democrat that always allows the will of the people to prevail in any contest or decision. The president had a clear purpose leading up to the primary to ensure a transparent, free and fair process that will bring back people's faith in democracy by taking good governance up to the grassroots level. The statement added, the presidency particularly notes that the opposition PDP is just out to run down the present administration on all issues, including those that are purely internal party affairs. Time for a first break. Please stay. <laughs> You won't go shake your body. This daddy make you calm down. He the pump say you savvy. You want to grow six packs in the air. I beg you not to pass me. You want to show yourself. Oh. your size. Find it with the new Etel data plans. Dial star 141 hash now. To Airtel, the smartphone oh. network. The National President, Naval Officers Wives Association, Hydra Nana Aisha Gambo, on behalf of all members and staff of the association, cordially welcomes all invited guests to the fundraising dinner with the construction of a magnificent 200 beds capacity Naval Officers Wives Association Women and Children Green Smart Hospital. This great initiative is the first of its kind since the establishment of the Naval Officers Wives Association as a non governmental organization. The hospital is designed to bring efficient and affordable women and children health care services to the general public. Leverage in telemedicine with a view to contributing to the overall health care delivery in the country. The fundraising dinner is scheduled to take place on Wednesday 15th of June 2022 at Lady Quali Conference Center, Sharton Hotel Abuja by 5 p.m. Her Excellency Dr. Mrs. Aisha Buhari, First Lady, Federal Republic of Nigeria, is a special guest of honor at the event. Bob Noah, Sale in Unism. Announcer, Mrs. Rhoda Olotu, National Public Relations Officer for NOAA National President. The federal government wishes to inform intending pilgrims to Saudi Arabia that the Saudi government will conduct random blood tests to verify COVID-19 vaccination status of all pilgrims. If you are a prospective pilgrim and unvaccinated or due for your second booster dose, hurry now to the nearest vaccination site to get vaccinated against COVID-19. In Saudi Arabia, pilgrims may be randomly chosen for antigen tests to confirm their vaccination status. Avoid embarrassment. Ensure that you are fully vaccinated. Please verify your vaccination records by visiting www.vaccination.gov and G slash verification dash guide at least 48 hours before your departure date. For any inquiries, visit www.mphcda.gov.ng or call 0700 220 That's 0700 220 This message is from the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. <laughs> How much last for this bag of rice? Customer, eh? Do I know? I'm going come out of it. Oh, yeah, come pay. Now you want to take pay. Uh -huh. You want to take it, go check it for bag of rice. Uh -huh. Give me one go back. <laughs> My country people, from trade by butter to paper naira notes, money go always change. Now, Central Bank of Nigeria don't introduce e naira. When will be our digital currency to begin use e naira? Download e naira app. Enter your minimum identification details like NIN, BVN, or KYC slash AML information. Then enter information like your name, date of birth, phone number, email, and password. Then submit. The system go validate your minimum ID. Then you go receive email when you confirm see you don't get in naira wallet plus including your login details congratulations login to your 
account to begin use in Naira. For more information, ask your bank or scan this QR code. This message now from Bankers Committee. The management of the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC, wishes to bring to the notice of the Executive Chairman of State Universal Basic Education Boards, SUBEPS, and the Federal Capital Territory Universal Basic Education Board, FCT UBEP, that the 24th quarterly meeting of UBEC management and the Executive Chairman of SUBEPS and FCT UBEP has been scheduled to hold as follows. Venue, to hear guest place hotel, Kano, Kano State. Arrival, Monday 13th, June 2022. Meeting days, Tuesday 14th and Wednesday 15th, June 2022. Departure, Thursday 16th, June 2022. Theme, rethinking the approaches for addressing the challenges of out-of-school phenomena in Nigeria. Education for all is the responsibility of all. Dr. Amid Boboyi, Executive Secretary, Announcer. A mother's instincts are hardly ever wrong. She knows when all is not well. And he trusts M and B paracetamol, the red one, to save the day. With fast-acting and effective M and B paracetamol tablet, the red one, and its pleasant-tasting pineapple flavor syrup, she sends aches and pains far away from her family. M and B paracetamol, pain can't stop you. If symptoms persist after two days, consult your doctor. Thank you for staying. In view of the forthcoming 2022 general elections, the Nigerian Army is to review its rules of engagement and code of conduct during security operations. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, gave the order at the 2022 Second Quarter Chief of Army Staff Conference holding in Abuja. Chino Achebe in his famous Teams Fall Apart says, since men have learned to shoot without missing, birds have also learned to fly without pitching. It is in similar vein that these army principal officers, heads of units and formations converge on Abuja for the 2022 second quarter conference of the chief of army staff to appraise and strategize its operational tactics. This is necessary in view of the dynamism and complex nature of the nation's emerging security threats. The holding of this conference is timely as we look forward to conduct a holistic appraisal of our engagements in the first half of the year and develop strategies to consolidate on our achievements in the months ahead, particularly in the provision of security support to facilitate the peaceful conduct of electioneering activities for the 2023 general elections. With ongoing internal security operations in virtually all the nation's political zones, the Chief of Army staff ordered the immediate review of its rules of engagement before the forthcoming elections. It is usual for the military to review its rules of engagement and conduct other operations in tune with developing situations and developing activities in order to ensure through our support to civil authority uh, free and fair elections. A locally produced armored personnel carrier with surveillance and night vision capacity up to 20 kilometers was on display at the conference. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. And away from security, as part of commemoration of the 2022 Democracy Day in Gombe State, Governor Muhammadu Inwa Yahaya has inaugurated a 36th classroom model primary and secondary school in the oldest ward in the state, which has been without school since the creation of the state. Emmanuel Akila reports that the governor also inspected the State School of Nursing and Midwifery and the construction. Creation of democracy to the people is all about provision of infrastructure that will meet their basic needs. And to the people of Kumbia, Kumbia, the construction of this school has broken the things of education backwardness in their area. And our children and our younger brothers, they will get better education in this world. What the governor has done to us is a source of pride to the people of Kumbia, Kumbia, to the people of Gombe State, and to all people who are meaning well in this country. The project for the construction of the model primary and junior secondary school was awarded as part of the Democracy Day celebration in 2021. After inspection of the ongoing project for the construction of the State School of Nursing and Midwifery, Governor Muhammad Inouye Haya expresses sense of fulfillment with the level of growth of Nigeria's democracy. 
The idea is for us to develop human resources and the capacity of the state, of the state in every field of human endeavor. So what you have in the primary schools will translate to what you have in the uh, higher schools and equally to the tertiary institutions. So that at the end of the day, Gombe State will not be shortchanged. Gombe State will have enough manpower. The Inway Higher Administration seems to place high premium on the education sector while ensuring that healthcare, roads, infrastructure and other needs of the people are also provided in Gombe. Emmanuel Akira, NTN News. Many thanks, Emmanuel. Now heading to the courtroom, a federal high court sitting in Abuja has convicted and sentenced to two years in prison two co-defendants in a suit filed by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, against suspended DCP Abakiari over alleged drug deal. The presiding judge, Justice Emeka Mwite, in delivering the judgment said having admitted to have committed the offense preferred against them in counts five six and seven by the ndlea chibuna umyebe and emeka ezinwani who are sixth and seventh defendants are hereby convicted accordingly justice and waited thereafter sentenced them to two years imprisonment each on counts five six and seven he said attempts which shall run concurrently would commence from the day the defendants were arrested by the NDLEA. The convicts are the two drug traffickers arrested at the Akanu Ibiam International Airport in Enugu by the Nigerian police and handed over to the NDLEA. And on the war attack, more governors are still visiting Ondo State to commiserate with the government and people of the state over Sunday, June 5, gun attack on a Catholic church in Owo. Abiola Ario reports that governors of Ugun, Lagos and Kwara states and the APC national chairman have also visited. The state governor who spoke on behalf of the other governors described the incident as an attack too many, saying it is time Nigerians cohabit peacefully. He announced the donation of 25 million naira each from the three governors for the victims of the attack. We came with a shock. We find this attack not just an attack on the people of Owo, but on the people of the state but the entire people of the Southwest. So. Governor Akere Dolu appreciated their gesture, describing it as symbolic. He said his administration will not relent in its efforts at ensuring that the people of the state are secured. We have come for this country in peace. We have the child that was child every time to maintain Nigeria. Nigeria. The governor also received the National Executive of the All Progressives Congress, APC, led by its chairman, Abdullahi Adamu. There will be a mass barrier for worshippers who lost their lives in the attack on Friday, June 17, in Akure, Abiola, Rio, NTA News. Now looking at other races, a 24-member planning committee for the Maiden UNWTO Global Conference to be hosted by Nigeria in November has been inaugurated by the Information and Culture Minister, Lai Mohammed. He gave the assurance that the event will provide Nigeria with the opportunity to showcase its assets in culture, tourism and the creative industry. Anthony Fawson reports. Which will be chaired by the Information and Culture Minister as the Permanent Secretary, Dr. Ifoma Adara Anyangutaku, as Deputy Chairman. Laya Mohamed explained that the right to host the inaugural edition of the global conference was given to Nigeria in a clear recognition of the country's rising profile in tourism, culture, and the creative industries, not just in Nigeria, but around the world. The creative industry, which is very art and crafts, design, fashion, film, video, photography, Music and performance have taken a central role in Nigeria and our potential of tourism. 
maintaining that the event will showcase Nigeria's best, projects Nigeria's image as a safe and desirable destination for leisure and business. It will also consolidate on the relationship with the United Nations World Tourism Organization and its member states. The granting of the equality right for the global conference to Nigeria is a clear demonstration of the confidence of the NWT and its member states in the country's capacity to deliver. Recall that Nigeria has successfully hosted the meeting of the UNODG's Commission for Africa four times. While the conference will provide a platform for interaction and exchange of ideas as well as best practices with key players in the industry, it will equally highlight the restarting of travel and tourism in a safe and seamless manner after COVID-19. In 2019, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, the tourism and the creative industries were fast-growing sectors with the value of over 1.47 trillion US dollars and 2.25 trillion dollars respectively. However, both sectors were greatly affected by the unprecedented pandemic. The global government we are planning to host will be a catalyst for the recovery of the critical sectors. The minister disclosed that ministers and officials from tourism, culture, and arts ministries of United Nations World Tourism Organization member states will be invited to attend. The planning committee, the minister added, will be assisted by 11 subcommittees. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Elsewhere, the need for alumni to sustain contribution for the development of their alma mater has taken center stage following the inauguration of a lecture theater at Kaduna Polytechnic named after Executive Vice Chairman, National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, Professor Mohammed Sani Haruna. Suleiman Rigachukun reports. This is the common feature in institutions of learning overcrowded classrooms and dilapidated infrastructure. Most academic institutions in Nigeria have requirements for additional infrastructure so that learning can thrive. And we are choked, we are not even learning. Sometimes we don't even hear what the lecturer is even saying. Learning in an overcrowded place, well, how can you learn? Sometimes we will not be able to hear what the lecturer says without mic. So it's not nice at all. However, steps have been taken to address this problem with the provision of this new lecture theater. The digitized lecture theater will, in addition to providing conducive learning environment, bridge e-learning gaps of the polytechnic. This is the latest of the type of learning facility in this region that they can have. I'm sure it will motivate them to learn more. Stakeholders, including alumni of the premier Kaduna Polytechnic, came together to identify a worthy course by the executive vice chairman National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NACENI, to the development of the Polytechnic. Let's Speakers took turns highlighting the need for stakeholders to join hands with government in complementing funding of education. It is a very wonderful uh, achievement and I want to use this opportunity to call up the other meaningful Nigerians to ensure that uh, they copy from what Professor M.S. Haruna is doing. Alumni associations uh, should continue to assist like it has happened at the Kaduna Polytechnic. They have just motivated me to go and invest into my institution. So I think it's a good thing and if all of us who graduated from our various institutions are going to invest back. Professor Mohammed Sani Haruna performed the inauguration saying the Polytechnic should deploy to proper use. And from Kaduna, we head to Lagos, where Adeola will feed us with more news. Adeola. Thank you, Iere. The Sema Area Command of Nigeria Customs Service has standard operating procedure of perishable items. Michael Oleye reports. Windy sound and waving noise of the ocean are beauty to behold. But sadly, smugglers are riding on these innocent virtues to ferry their legal products. 
at the Semiland border. It is a common tactic used by smugglers since the setting up of more checkpoints is making the illegal importation of petroleum products extremely difficult. 48,000 liters of petrol out of the total liters of more than 320,000 seized will have been successfully ferried through the waters, but for effective monitoring mechanism put in place by the Seme Area Command of the Nigerian Customs Service. The worry here for the customs is not the volume, but a seizure of about 1,600 jerrycans just within 24 hours. At times, we even go to the source, to their sources. There are filling stations that at times we go there and we close them. Being Nigeria's gateway to other West African countries, the Seme Badagri Axis is a transport route for drug trafficking. But the customs, through intensive stop and search, intercepted 306 parcels of cannabis sativa, more than 100 cartons of tramadol, and other unregulated and expired drugs with duty paid value close to 1.5 billion naira. An added advantage to this is the arrest of two suspects. You all know the effect that this drug do to our youths, to the country. The youths are the future of this country. And once you destroy the youths, it means you have destroyed the country. The NDLEA, while receiving the goods, lauded the contribution of the Customs Service to society well-being with a promise to equally complement the efforts of the agency. Try and see how we can you know, conduct some underground investigation, then uh, we secure court order for destruction. The same area command of the Nigeria Customs Service singled out interagency collaboration and synergy with host community for the feat achieved. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. The United States Embassy in Nigeria has inaugurated a modern play and education space to support general learning, particularly in the area of boosting intellectual and cross-cultural capacity between Nigeria and the U.S. Our correspondent reports that the facility cited within the premises of a national museum will help children and young people connect with historical artifacts. Being an historical eco space which connects man to cultural heritage and monumental artifacts, a museum does not just serve the purpose of exhibition. In fact, there are more learning motifs connected to visitation. The National Museum in Lagos averagely hosts 75,000 children and young people annually, and before now, there has been a major constraint relating to availability of relaxation sports to complement the entire learning process. From the inscriptions to the drawings on the wall, the entire space gives satisfaction of a modern playground, a type of ambience emphasized by the U.S. Embassy in Nigeria, which necessitated the commitment of resources for the Public Diplomacy Fund. These preservation projects benefit both future generations and the growth of the tourism industry. I am proud to say that since the program's inception, Nigeria has received 10 ambassador fund for cultural preservation grants worth a million dollars. To the National Commission for Museums and Monuments, this gesture is a plus to its quest of upgrading galleries to international standards in which eight have been completed across the country and another nine on the radar for upscaling. The icing on the cake, however, is that more global interventions are coming on board to support this initiative. But also recently, we won a grant uh, on the, by the Bank of America Art Conservation Fund to the value of $40,000 to restore and conserve Ibo Uku bronzes at the National Museum Lagos. When the children come in, they go into the galleries first. After they experience their education in the gallery, they come for their recreational time in the play on the playground. The whole idea of the modern play and education space was influenced by Olamide Babajide when in 2017 she was selected as one of the top 10 tech women by the U.S. And a dream of Green Park, where people can sit and relax when and serve educational purpose. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News.
so much from the Center of Excellence. But do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nca.ng slash or live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. The news will continue after this time out to stay on. Governor Udom Iman continues to deliver projects that are touching millions of lives across hundreds of communities. A man you can trust. A leader who delivers. A state with endless possibilities. <laughs> They make a run, use the phone, Jari. Guy, what is the blue line now? Ah, Baba, calm down now. So we do say now, eh, wala, they give me stress. They don't have to block my line. But now, go and I ain't leave a civil pass now. Eh? Yes, yeah, see, fool. Just dance now. Once they run my hands, stay away to do. See? Take, give my phone. Hey, what if you don't get NIM before? See, fool. Just go any glow word now. Once you go get your NIM. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Plenty guys, they don't link the NIL until now they are posting the blog. Yeah, they when they go any blow what now once they go block their line. Yes, sir. I know what I'm making. I don't know what I'm going to start my own later. Guys, talk plenty talk. You know when I link my line, blow that be plenty phone up. Yes, now when you link your own line, blow it that should come to 20,000 Arab bonus. 20,000? Yes, so 20,000 Arab bonus. Yeah, ma'am. Thank you, good. Renew. Yeah, I don't link my NIL. This bonus now for both you and existing customers, so... The Honorable Minister of Police Affairs, Muhammad Megeri Dingadi, Kipuka Sokoto, the Inspector General of Police, Al Kali Baba Usman, PSC, FDC, NPM, and the Commandant, Nigeria Police Academy, AIG Ahmed Abdurrahman, PSC, MNI, welcomes the President and Commander in Chief, Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, and the general public to the fourth regular course passing out parade. Date Thursday, 16th June 2022. Venue Muhammad Buhari Parade Ground, Polak. Time 10 a.m. Prompt. Management Polak. Announcer. I miss them. Well, they should be on their way by now. Will it feel like it used to? With everyone so busy these days. It will be fine. Suddenly, she passes right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Single file. So, Grandma, what was Grandma like? She always found ways to bring us all together. Devon Cakes, taste that brings us all together. When you think of fruit juice and all the goodness that comes in it, think Chivita, specially made for you. There is more to choose from. Whatever your preferences are, there is a Chivita for you. Oh! Ah! Yes! <laughs> Check out our new Chivita Smart Malt Drink. So, what's your Chivita? La. Bed Mates Furniture is here to delight you with super cool luxury furniture you love and desire for that amazing look in your home and office. From 16th May to 25th June 2022, Bed Mates brings you the biggest sales of luxury furniture at unbelievable low prices. As we celebrate you, our darling friend and customer, in the 20th anniversary of giving you love and comfort in furniture you're proud of, the moment your guests and loved ones come through your door with your oohs and ahs, visit Bed Mates showrooms now to get furniture that brings life to your home and enjoy delightful gifts like cash bags, beds, sofas, dining tables and plenty others you love to have.
have you back. The 2022 Civil Service Day celebration has kicked off at a ministerial level with the Federal Ministry of Special Duties at Intergovernmental Affairs recognizing three outstanding civil servants for excellent service delivery. Batari Ikme tells us more. Bukola Olakunle, an assistant executive officer in the budget department of the Federal Ministry of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, was overwhelmed when she was announced as an awardee for excellence in service delivery. Her punctuality, creativity and dedication to duty gave her an edge over other colleagues. I didn't even expect it that I was going to be able to do something that would give me what. All awardees were evaluated for uncommon patriotism, commitment to the core values of the civil service, integrity in service delivery, among other considerations. It will spur me up to do more in civil service. What is necessary is for us to put in our best in service. For the Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, Senator George Akume, the reward and recognition of staff will be an annual event in the ministry. Going forward, the faith of the Nigeria civil service now lies in your hands. You can either make or manage your conduct, actions or inactions. This ceremony is in line with the directives of the head of the civil service of the Federation to federal ministries to organize activities marking the celebration of the civil service day at their various offices. And Other speakers agree that capacity building and staff motivation are crucial to boosting productivity in the civil service. Abuja Mitaire Ikwe, NTA News. Meanwhile, activities at the Federal Civil Service Commission came to a halt when a group of physically challenged persons barricaded the entrance to the premises over alleged discrimination on employment, despite their meeting with the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. Francis from reports. These are members of the Technology Association of Visually Impaired Persons of Nigeria and their families protesting at the main entrance to the Federal Civil Service Commission, Abuja, over their inability to secure employment with the Federal Government of Nigeria. If we get appointment with us, we will leave. Without appointment with us, let them go and obey the SGF. Most of our members, they are graduates, master holders, PhD holders, and that are who are there too. They do not say. Permanent Secretary of the Federal Civil Service Commission appeals to the protesters that the Commission is not recruiting and cannot go against the government's procedures. Yes, we understand their plight. If the embargo on employment is lifted and the waiver is generated, that's vacancies are we don't generate vacancy. If vacancies are generated for us to fill, when the time comes, we will know we will remember that there is a five percent space to employ them. And when we advertise it to them and get their, their applications and they'll be subjected to screening and employment. Though quite a sorry sin, but due process must be followed. So, for now, they can only hope for an intervention from higher authority. Frank says from NTN News. Now time to talk business and Benny Adams is here. Thank you, Yeri, and welcome to business. The federal government is taking necessary steps to entrench financial discipline in the public sector in a bid to ensure prudent management of scarce resources. To this end, the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation has begun a three-day retreat to acquaint members of the Technical Subcommittee on Cash Management and improve their capacity to advance recovery strategies having challenges so we are here to put heads together and do strategies just come up with strategies to know how to manage our current fiscal challenges so that government will find a way either increase our revenue generation reduce our cost so that we can balance our fiscal challenges maintaining physical discipline is essential to maintaining macroeconomic stability and improving aggregate economic performance the objective is to cut down the cost of governance and maximize resource utilization for development 
Another capital market, the Nigeria Equities Market All Share Index declined by 0.16% to close transaction at 53,113.64 basis points. Market capitalization stood at 28.6 trillion naira, 299.9 million shares valued at 3.099 billion naira, exchange hands in 5,394 deals. FCMB, UBA, and Transnational Corporation led in a volume and a value that is business news network news continues after this break you did find a bonga entertainment not look for oh now go tv day enjoy better film correct season film self boku plus telenovelas from all over the world football educational and fun channels for your children Niger shows them like who wants to be a millionaire <laughs> no darling at all oh. go carry your go tv decoder go tenner plus one month max subscription for just six thousand nine hundred naira be where stories live go tv love it ask the 2023 elections draw near remember evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your children as elections approach? Have you warned them not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them what the consequences of electoral violence might be? Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. Talk to your children. Protect them from unscrupulous politicians who want to put them in harm's way while they are open children are comfortable at home, within and outside the country. Let's join hands to make 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. No. Is everything ready for tonight? Yes. Go ready. Go ready. Good morning, baby. Sit down. Have your breakfast. I don't want you late for school, okay? Where's my wife? I've been trying to find her for the past hour. Do this to me. Do this. Now time to have a bit of sports with Olumbude Ekuntola as our guide. More reactions continue to throw a Super Eagles 10 0 record breaking victory at the expense of their counterpart from Sao Tome and Principe. The result, which kept Super Eagles on top of Group A, football analysts described as the beginning of good things to come. And we are gradually having that Nigerian spirit in our team. Uh, everybody seems to be fighting for shots this time around. Nobody is complacent. And going forward, the Eagles have not arrived. They are not a team that we should be celebrating uh, on right now because uh, Joseph Pacero, we know, he will want to quickly impress. We have to look at the long run. What are the opposition that is going to face next? Will they be able to get this kind of result? In the Nigerian Professional Football League, Kano Pillars will host the Kada FC in a midweek encounter. From the FA Nations League, some matches later for Tuesday are Germany versus Italy, Netherlands against Wales, Poland will take on Belgium as Armenia scores up against Scotland. In athletics, Nigeria's group is already recorded as season best in the triple jump event with a 13.95 meter jump to move from fourth to second and help Nigeria finish third on the medals table with a total of 11 medals at the just concluded Senior Africa Athletic Championship in Mauritius. In volleyball, efforts at increasing participation and the popularity of volleyball are yielding results as a tournament among secondary school students just ended in Ilorin Kwara State. Akpata Jela Secondary School, a match champions. Under seven participated in this competition, and I'll say we are fulfilled. Ahmad Fulani reports that the aim of the competition is to take volleyball down to the grassroots. With sports update, Ulum De Guntola, NT News. The death has occurred of Mrs. Victoria Nwabugwai Ajiru Ne Ezeobi, aged 74. Assessment by Dr. Chukudebube Adero of Umuyureagu, Iguachi in Oji River, local government area of Enugu State, on behalf of the family, indicates that there will be a wake up on Thursday, 16th June 2022, by 7 pm. 
Burial service and interment will be on Friday, 17th June, at Emmanuel Anglican Church, Iguachi. They will be laying a foundation stone for Victoria Adero Memorial Health Center and Endowment Fund, while outing service will be on Sunday at Emmanuel Anglican Church, Iguachi. And that concludes NTA Network News tonight. Many thanks for watching. And here's a quick reminder that rape is a crime. Do the needful. I'm Ian Ray John. Have a good night.